this one we're going to graph using the three forms that we're talking about for today, right? Being point slope, slope intercept, and standard. We need to recognize for this example that point slope form is given. So if point slope form is given and I'm asked to graph, then let's identify a point I can work with from this form. And then let's identify the slope as well. So we can count things out and find another point to graph our line. Now slope is going to be this value in front of the quantity that contains the x's. So slope is going to be 2 fifths. The point comes from looking at basically what's attached to y here and what's attached to x. Since in our point slope form it's y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Again, we've got to change signs on these values as we transfer over to our point. So our x coordinate at our point here, right here I see a negative 1 with that x. I'm going to make that a positive 1. And my y coordinate at this point, since I see a positive 2 associated with y here, I'm going to make that a negative 2 over here. Again, we're changing the signs because we're subtracting in the original form. We have to use the opposite values. So now I have my point of 1, negative 2 that I can plot. So 1, negative 2, plot that point. Kind of like we did yesterday. You know, yesterday we did slope-intercept form, so we started on the y-axis. From that point, we counted out our slope to get to another point. Today, point-slope form, we just got a point that doesn't happen to be on the y-axis. From this point, we can do the same thing with the slope. We can count up 2. We can go 5 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plot our second point. Two points determine the line, so we draw our line. So if you're given point slope form, that is a way to graph. Now, if I give you another example here. Again, we're going to start with that point slope form idea. We'll identify the point. We'll identify the slope. We'll draw out the graph to consider what it looks like. But then we're going to transform it over to the other forms. And we're going to discuss with the other forms how they also apply to this graph. So starting with the point slope form, you've got a, a point this time. Or if I look to see what's connected to x, I see a positive 4, so the x-coordinate would be negative 4. I look to see what's connected to this y, I see a positive 1, so the y-coordinate would be negative 1. Slope is going to be negative 2. So if we graph that out, start my point negative 4, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, down negative 1. There's my point. Using my slope of negative 2, understanding that's negative 2 over 1. I'm going to go down 2 from that point I just plotted and 1 to the right. Try to redeem myself here and draw a better line. Not bad. So we see how the point slope form can give us a line if we need to graph one. But now let's transform this over to slope-intercept form and see what happens as we compare back to this line we just drew. If I put this in slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form means I need to solve for y. Let y equal the mx plus b form, right? So if I solve for y here, the first thing I would do is I would subtract this 1 over. I'd have negative 2 times the quantity of x plus 4 minus 1. If I do a little distributing, I'd have negative 2x, got negative 2 times 4, so negative 8, minus 1. Collect your like terms, y equals negative 2x minus 9. Now I know we've already graphed the line, but suppose we had to graph the line off of this form. Let's see how it compares. If I were going to graph off of the slope intercept form, I would start with the y intercept at negative 9. So I go down to negative 9 on the y-axis, I plot a point. From that point, utilizing my slope of negative 2, I would travel down 2 and then 1 to the right. Okay, down 2 takes me off the graph, 1 to the right takes me over here. In this vicinity, I could plot another point. Hey, what do you know? The two points fall on the same line I just drew. That should make sense, right? It's still the same line, it's just a different form. 
So now let's take this form. Let's transfer over to standard form. Standard form, AX plus BY equals C. A, B, and C have to be integers, and A has to be positive. So switching over to standard form, using my most recent work right here, I'm going to add 2X over. I have 2X plus that Y on the left side of the equation. That's going to equal negative 9. And if I want A, B, and C to be integers, it looks like I've got that, right? And if I want A to be positive, it looks like i got that. So there's my standard form. Now here's what's nice about standard form. If you're ever given this form to start and asked to graph, you could use what's known as an intercept approach. How I use an intercept approach? I take one of my variables, x or y, and I let it be 0. So suppose I let x be 0. If I let x be 0, that takes the x term out, right? It cancels itself out. And what happens? Well, if I let x be 0, then y equals negative 9. Well, let's think about this now. If x is 0 and y is negative 9, that's a point, right? I could write that as an ordered pair. And if I plotted that point, 0, negative 9, well, I'd be right here. I'd have my y-intercept, right? So if you let x be 0 and you figure out what y is, you get a y-intercept. Now, on the flip side of that, suppose you let y be 0. Like I said, pick a variable, let it be 0, see what happens. If you let y be 0, then the y term cancels out from the standard form. You've got 2x left equal to negative 9. If you solve that for x, we get negative 9 halves. All right, so y is 0, x is negative 9 halves. That's a point. Write it out here as an ordered pair. If I think about negative 9 halves, if I divide that out, you get negative 4 and a half, right? 2 goes into 9 4 times, remainder of 1, so negative 4 and a half. On the x-axis is where I would plot this since y is 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Hey, look at that happens to line up with the original line, which it should, because it is the same line. It's just a different approach to use. So there's three different forms and really three different ways you could graph this particular line. All right, on this one, although it may not appear that way, we actually do have a point slope form here. If I make some uh, slight revisions to this problem, since I only see the x term right here, I could say this is x minus 0 as a quantity, right? That would make sense if I'm trying to relate directly to point slope form. That way I could see from this point slope form that my point, if I start with the x coordinate, that'd have to be 0. If I go to the y coordinate, again, we're just changing signs here, I see negative 5 is attached to y, so positive 5, that would have to be the y coordinate for my point. Then slope, slope is two-fifths. You plot your point of 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Utilize your slope of two-fifths to get a second point. From this point, go up to 5 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Got your two points. Draw your line. So if we were to take this original point slope form now and transfer it over to slope intercept form, we appreciate we're solving for y when we go to slope intercept form. So originally I just had the 2 fifths x here, right? I'd be adding 5 over, so it'd be y equals 2 fifths x plus 5. In one easy step, we are there at which point we could graph again, but we'd just be repeating the process, right? Here, it's all the same points. Just so happens this 0, 5, you know, we started with the y-intercept on that one as well. 
Now transforming this over to standard form. Just like I did on the last example, I'm going to take this x term, I'm going to swing it over, I'm going to subtract it over. That negative 2 fifths x plus that y on the left side of the equation equals 5. So the rule was, in this form, our coefficients and our constant value over here, those have to be integer values, right? So we're going to clear the fraction. Got a denominator of 5 I'm playing with. going to multiply both sides here by that 5. And at the same time, I'm going to appreciate this lead coefficient. Well, that needs to be positive, right? So if I multiply this by a negative 5, that will also change the sign over. So negative 5 gets distributed through. Negative 5 gets multiplied to this 2 fifths, meaning that 5 and that 5 cancel. That negative and that negative cancel to positive, so 2x is left. Negative 5 times y, got minus 5y. And then negative 5 times 5 over here got negative 25. There is your standard form. Once again, the convenience of having standard form, if I was going to graph, I could use an intercept approach. So just to check real quick, if I let x be 0, the x term would drop out. You'd have negative 5y left equal to negative 25. If you solve for y, your y would be 5, meaning your y-intercept would be 5, which we've now beat to death because we've had that same point on all these. Flip side here, if I let that y term be 0 and I solve for x, got 2x equals negative 25. Divide by 2, x equals negative 25 over 2. All right, negative 25 over 2, that's going to be the point I plot on the x-axis if I was graphing by intercepts, right? So negative 25 divided by 2 is negative, what, 12 and 1 half? So 12 and 1 half. All right, we see how this line was drawn. That's taking us off the grid over here. But we could appreciate, especially if I drew this line a little bit straighter, that, yeah, it's probably going to come in over here at that negative 12 and a half. So if you want to use intercepts to graph, just go to standard form.